Good morning, wonderful people. I always love to see most of your faces smiling. Uh, so, and that's always a good thing. This is Sunday. God bless all of you. Oh, could you uh, stand if you can, please? <clears throat> Wild and free, creative and refreshing, God's Spirit flows through this place. Come on, Holy Spirit. Gentle and mysterious, patient and caring, God's Spirit moves in our hearts. Come on, Holy Spirit. Breaking barriers, making connections, healing divisions, and making us one, God's Spirit flows between us. Come on, Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Holy God, who comes to us in breath, visits us from the throne of heaven and sets us aflame with amazement and joy. You open our paths to new visions 
and guide our feet deeper into your wisdom. Give us faith to trust your presence through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our sister Julian of Norwich spoke these words of faith. All people who shall be saved while we are in this world have in us a marvelous mixture of both well-being and woe. We have in us our risen Lord Jesus. We have in us the misery of the harm of Adam's falling and dying. We are steadfastly protected by Christ, and by the touch of his grace, we are raised into sure trust of salvation. And by Adam's fall, our perceptions are so shattered in various ways, by sins and by different sufferings, that we are so darkened and blinded that we can hardly find any contact, comfort. In the strong assurance of pardon, let us confess our sins. God of fire and wind, holy and powerful, mighty and mysterious, we are drawn by your spirit to this place. As we gather and behold your glory, we become aware of our sin. We have ignored your word. We have rejected your gifts. We have failed in your work. Ignoring the truth and the cross. We have assumed those different from us. We divide our loyalties and we divide our hearts. Let your spirit burn away our sins and fill us with faith and courage so that we might enter into the promise of this day and receive the fullness of all that you have prepared for us in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Spirit animates our lives, lifting us into the presence of Christ and sealing our hearts in the promises of faithful love.
And now let us take a few moments to tune our hearts and minds to God. Open our hearts and minds by the power of your spirit, holy God, that we might hear and receive the message you intend for us today. Amen. Both of our scripture readings today have to do with languages. So let us listen for what God is saying to us today through both of these readings. The first is in is found in Genesis, in uh, chapter 11. This is a uh, story that we probably heard when we were growing up in Sunday school. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, Let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, they are one people, and they all have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. And then turning to the book of Acts, we have the story of what happened on the first Pentecost day. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and all this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, 
In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And a word um, before we start the sermon, I don't know if this is a word of explanation or a word of warning, but this is a sermon that is what is known as an imaginative sermon. It presents... Uh, everything that would be in a regular sermon, but it's just told in a different way. So, just I hope you enjoy it. But let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As was spoken through the prophet Joel, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. It was the wind that woke me up that morning. I heard the rush through the open window above my bed. A wooden shutter banged, banged, banged against the wall. Yet it wasn't the incessant crash of wood against mud plaster that opened my eyes. It wasn't the movement of air over my face that rolled me over. I got out of bed because the breeze smelled fresh and clean. The wind was new, and I caught a whiff of home. My brother and I came to Jerusalem almost two months ago with mom and dad. We first thought Dad had lost his mind when he dropped his fishing net to follow Jesus. We knew a little bit about Jesus because everybody was talking about him. He grew up in Nazareth, but had made some folks pretty mad there. He had healed my Uncle Simon's mother-in-law and then a bunch of other sick people that evening. That morning, we had run down to the shore to see Dad. He had been fishing all night, so we brought him some bread and a skin of fresh water. We arrived to see crowds and crowds of people. Suddenly, they were parting just like we had heard about Moses and the Red Sea. The crowd parted, and Jesus came walking up toward us with my Uncle Simon, my dad, and two other fishermen following along behind. 
on the shore were the boats and the nets and more fish than I had ever seen in my entire life. But they were leaving it all behind. People were running toward the fish, hungry people who needed something to eat. And there seemed to be enough for each and every one of them. But Dad didn't turn back. He just followed after Jesus. When he reached us, he looked and said, Tell your mother to bring you into the hills and meet me there. We weren't sure what this was all about, but we ran home as fast as we could. Mom shook her head. She looked worried. But she packed some food in a basket and together we headed for the hills in the direction that Jesus and my father had gone. Well, mom should not have worried. It was wonderful. There were about 120 of us who followed Jesus in the hills of Galilee. Others would come and go. The crowds would swell when we moved closer to the sea or after we entered a village. Jesus would teach and heal and preach, and then we would move on. Every time he spoke, my mind and my heart were filled with warmth and life like I had never felt before. It was marvelous. The air was fresh and clean. We always seemed to have enough food to share. The sun kissed our arms and legs, and the rain washed our cares away. We were alive in the hills of Galilee. Well, one day, Jesus said that he was going to Jerusalem. I'd always wanted to go to Jerusalem, the holy city where King David had reigned, the temple, the people, the excitement. I couldn't wait. My parents, however, were a bit more cautious. They tried to send us back to Capernaum to stay with our grandmother. But my brother and I were determined to go. Wherever Jesus went, wherever Mom and Dad went, we were going. Well, finally, after a few tense days and arguments and tears, they said, okay, you can go. So we did. We had a parade when we arrived, but Jesus seemed troubled. The city was busy and noisy and smelly. All the people there for the Passover made it crowded, and it was hard to get around. Nothing like the glorious place I had imagined. Mom and Dad were anxious and kept my brother and me close to them. I missed the wide open spaces of Galilee, the fresh air, and the smells of home. Then things went horribly wrong. It was the night of Passover. We had eaten the meal together in secret, Dad had gone with Jesus to pray in the garden, as they did every night. It was late, so Mom put us to bed. It hardly seemed like I had closed my eyes when Dad picked me up and said, We had to go. We left everything and fled across the valley to Bethany. Jesus had been arrested. 
We stayed there in Bethany the next day while Dad went into the city to see what was going on. As the darkness was falling, he returned, his eyes bloodshot with tears. He shook his head and said just one word, crucified. I cried and I cried and I cried till I threw up. I was only 11. I had never known pain like that before. We spent the Sabbath in Bethany. We said the words and went through the motions, but that was about all. Dad went back into the city the next morning because he and the other disciples were meeting to figure out what to do. He came running back shouting, He is risen! Just like he said, Jesus is risen. It was true. Jesus was risen. I saw him with my own eyes that night. And after 40 days, I even watched as he ascended into heaven. We moved back into the city of Jerusalem because Jesus had told us to wait there. Mom and Dad were anxious to get back home to Galilee. I missed the green grass and the fresh air. But before he left, Jesus had said, stay. So we stayed. So, yes, it was the smell of home that woke me up when the wind started blowing. I shook my brother awake. Mom and Dad were gone. They had gathered early to pray at the house where Uncle Simon stayed. So we hurried that way. A roar came from that direction, so we started to run. The crowd was gathering by the time we arrived. Uncle Simon stood in front of everyone and was talking. Everyone was murmuring. I didn't understand much of what was being said. It sounded like other languages, and yet everyone was smiling and shaking their heads like they understood exactly what was going on. An old man in front of us stood rocking back and forth, Then, with a loud voice, he started shouting, I dream of the day of the Lord. The Messiah will come with power and might. The Spirit will fill all those who call on his name. The righteous will be separated from the unrighteous. The Lord Jesus will come to judge us all. He continued to rock back and forth, back and forth. I watched him. I looked up at my Uncle Simon. I looked at my brother, and his eyes were looking back at me, wide with surprise. I found myself rocking back and forth back and forth, back and forth. My vision became blurry. Words began to emerge from my mouth that I could not control. They just flowed out like a stream. And I began to prophesy. Sons and daughters, old men and young men, slaves and free, Hear the word of the Lord. I see the days that are to come for those who follow Jesus of Nazareth, Messiah, and Lord of all creation. As you gather together, breaking bread with one another, 
comforting one another in times of loss and sorrow, celebrating and worshiping together, working side by side in your communities, and spreading the good news of new life in Christ, you will know unbelievable joy when you seek only to serve yourself, when you refuse to see Christ in one another, when you neglect to gather for worship and fellowship, when you fail to care for the poor, the widows, and the orphans, when you stop the children from coming to the Lord, when you put your trust in wealth and wisdom instead of the Lord your God, you will know sorrow and pain and division. Trust not in your own understanding, but live in gratitude and grace. For you are saved not by your own efforts, but by the gift of God. This is the word of the Lord. My vision gradually returned. Those around me had moved back. I saw my brother standing with his mouth wide open. Dad emerged from the crowd and gathered both me and my brother in his arms. He said, yes, the word of the Lord has come today with the Holy Spirit. He smiled and picked us up and carried us on those strong fishermen's shoulders to Uncle Simon's house where my mother was waiting. We remained with the other apostles until we made our way back home to Galilee. Whenever we gathered together, the words of the prophecy were true. Have you found them true in your life, in your church? When you focused on Christ, cared for others, and lived life as a gift, has your life together been marked by unbelievable joy? When you lived for yourself alone, neglected to gather for worship and fellowship, and failed to care for those in need. Have you known sorrow, pain, and division? Search your heart and see. Yes, search your heart and see. As was spoken through the prophet Joel, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now let us rise in body or in spirit as we are able and proclaim what we believe using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have 
know him. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Before I begin the prayer of the people, are there those who need to be added to our prayers this morning? Keeping in mind that we will continue to pray for the ones on the prayer list. Yes, Ronnie. Um, first, for Holly Campbell, uh, our former minister's wife, she broke her elbow and it was operated on on Friday. Yeah, yeah. I hope she is doing well. Where is she? Hmm? Oh, where is she? Is she in, still in Greenville? She thinks I live here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, Jan. Prayers for safe travel. Uh, my son and daughter-in-law, Mark and Terry, are coming up from Florida for their summer vacation. Oh, okay. Before they have any time with them next week. Right, and and for all who may be traveling. Okay. Yes. Uh, prayers for Jen Gibson. She is on our prayer list, but she is having surgery tomorrow all right. for her cancer. All right. All right. Seeing no others, let us turn now to prayer. God, who gathers us on this Pentecost Sunday, in this season of the spirit and summer, as days grow more humid and the sun blazes hot, grant us a cool breeze of relief and the patience of a planted seed. May we grow in faithfulness in the dark, rich soil of word and worship. May the timing of our growth coincide with your created order. May we bloom in righteousness as the sun rises high and the crops grow tall. Today, we especially ask for prayers for Holly as she recovers from surgery for a broken elbow and for Jan Gibson as she continues treatment for her cancer. We also lift up in prayer all who are traveling at this time that they may have safe travels and traveling mercies. Peaceful spirit, in this season of war and violence, as bombs fall on the innocent, grocery shoppers are gunned down, children run for their lives, and refugees flee their homes in search of safe haven. Save us from evil and free us from our addiction to violence and weapons of destruction. Bend the arc of the universe toward justice. Inspire us with courage to resist the evil of racism, to proclaim your inclusive love, to root out the enemies of righteousness, to persist for peace. Spirit of wisdom and understanding, as you gather diverse people on Pentecost, Embolden us with a Christian hospitality that welcomes and receives all. Open our hearts to empathy and understanding of the circumstances of others. Empower us with your radical love that can strengthen and save. May we, your people, call on you with one voice as one body giving thanks and praise for your promise and redemption. In your mercy, beloved God, hear the prayers of your people. Now, as the body of Christ, we pray as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God's Spirit is among us, making all things new. Let us participate in this new creation by offering our gifts to God. have blessed each of us with gifts to serve and share, most gracious God. May the offerings we present today be used to further your kingdom and build your beloved community. Amen. You may be seated. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and north and south to gather and sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast that he has prepared. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Praise to you, O God, for all your works. You created the world and called it good, 
and made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us, and even when we turned from you, you remained ever faithful. Thank you, O oh God, for sending us your Son. He lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed the sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, then rose to new life that we might live and all creation be restored. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and one another, until we feast with him and with all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. On the night before he died, Jesus was at table with his disciples, and he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the meal, he took the cup and he said, This is the uh, cup of new, the new covenant sealed in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And now let us receive the gifts of God for the people of God. body of Christ broken for you.
God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, as we go forth from this place, remember that wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being there. Christ, who dwells within you, has something he wants to do through you. And God has given you the Holy Spirit to guide you, equip you, and sustain you along the way. Believe it. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the peace and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.